Hey everyone, it's Bigfoot. Today is Tuesday and I'm answering more questions of yours. And the questions that I'm actually answering today are from the demonstration video that I did on the techniques of trekking poles that I released on Saturday. And with my lack of resources that I had on that video, I decided to redo the video and actually do a better demonstration of the proper techniques and then my own technique. Now, if you wanna skip the proper techniques because you know them, go ahead and fast forward to the time just below in the title. If not, let's go ahead and get started with the proper techniques first. All right, to get started, you need to set your trekking poles. To do that, you're going to bend your arm until you have a 90 degree angle between your forearm and your elbow and your upper arm. And you're gonna set the trekking pole so that the grip will be comfortable in that 90 degree angle. For me, that's 115 centimeters on the bottom. And then I actually set it to 120 on the top. All right, now that we got the right height, there are, in most poles, they have a somewhere a marking on the pole that's gonna tell you R and L. So R is for right, L is for left. And the purpose of this is because of the strap. The poles are the exact same, but the straps are different. And as you can see with the strap, there is uh, the padding that's in the inside will actually go up further on the strap, uh, depending on which side that you have. And when I grip it, I'm gonna have more padding around my arm. Now, one tip that I did here that I thought was pretty ingenious is someone put a red piece of tape around the top of the trekking pole so they always knew that that was red for right. Sometimes the lettering will start to wear off, but that was a great best bet. So as you can see, with my arm bent at 90 degree angle, this is about the perfect height for me. Now, uh, let's talk about the proper ways to grip your trekking pole. What a lot of hikers do is go through the very top of the trekking pole strap, and then they do this death grip on the trekking pole. You don't want to do that, first of all, because you're really defeating the purpose of the strap. The purpose of the strap is really to distribute the weight from your lower body to the trekking pole. And it's going to give you stability and balance. Uh, you're not going to get that if you have this death grip on the trekking pole. When I hiked the Appalachian Trail last year, I saw a lot of hikers carrying the trekking poles like this, the death grip even using the straps some of them even cut the strap off and again you're defeating the whole purpose of the strap and a lot of the purpose of the trekking poles the proper way to grip your strap is when you're holding your strap you are going to go through the bottom up and over and then grip your trekking pole through the bottom up and over grip your trekking pole now as you can see with the right I have that pad going along my whole thumb. Now, if I did the wrong side, went up and over, there's no padding right here, even though the trekking pole is the same, and I'm gonna have probably more issues with possibly getting some blistering and things like that because I don't have the padding on there. And that's the reason why you wanna make sure you have the right trekking pole on the right side. Now, what this is going to do when you are carrying the trekking poles and using the proper method is your weight is going to all fall into the strap, which is being, which is basically taking the weight from the lower body and your backpack that's all going on your knees, your ankles, and your feet, and distributing it to your actual poles. Now, when you're hiking, you'll be hiking on flat terrain, you'll be ascending, and you'll be de descending. And there's different techniques of how you do each, and I want to cover each of those right now. All right, let's talk about using trekking poles on flat terrain. The purpose of trekking poles on flat terrain is really to give you stability, balance, and rhythm. Now, when you're using trekking poles, you want to lead with the trekking pole on the opposite side of the foot that you are walking with. So if I'm leading with my left foot, then I use my right trekking pole. Right foot, my left. And what this is doing is I have four points of contact, but I have that stability and balance because I'm using the alternate side of the trekking pole with my arm so I can still have that balance. Now, this is something that if you don't normally do, you'll need to practice a little bit. But 
It will come naturally. Now, I mentioned that outside of flat terrain, trekking poles will help give you rhythm. So when I'm hiking on flat terrain, I typically use my trekking poles at an angle. And when I am trekking, I am digging into the ground and creating that rhythm to help propel me forward. You will use the same technique when you're ascending, but you can use the same technique when you're on flat terrain as well. So that kind of wraps up flat terrain. All right, let's talk about ascending. Now, trekking poles when you're ascending, the purpose of them is to really help drive your energy from your legs to your core, your torso, and your upper body. This will help be able to balance out the energy so you're not just using all leg to get up the ascents. At the same time, you're going to be able to go so much faster than without any trekking poles. Now, when you are looking at some of the, the steeper ascents, like maybe perhaps this one here, you may want to adjust your poles to be shorter. Any steep ascents or steep descents might require you to either shorten or extend your trekking poles. When you're ascending, you want to have shorter poles because you are going to be using your trekking poles really behind you to grip the ground and to propel you forward. So uh, I have adjusted this down five centimeters and I'm going to demonstrate now using the proper technique on ascending. So first off, I'm going to lead with my trekking poles behind me and I'm going to use my upper body to propel me forward using my trekking pole. Now, when you are hitting parts that are really steep like this, and you'll see in the White Mountains, trekking poles also give you stability from falling backwards or leaning from side to side. All right, let's talk about descending. This is the really important part about using trekking poles. This is what's going to really prevent a lot of injury and impact to your lower body. When you're descending using trekking poles, you want to be leading with your trekking poles first. Opposed to when we ascended, we led behind with our trekking poles. Now we're leading in front. Now, if you are going down a steep descent, you will want to extend your trekking poles. I'm going to do that for this demonstration here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you two different methods which you can use when you're descending. So the first method, you're going to obviously always lead with your trekking poles, but I, I kind of resemble this kind of like a mountain goat. So I'm, I'm going to lead with my trekking poles and I'm going to kind of mountain goat my way down. I'm pressing all of my weight in, into the straps itself. I have a loose grip on my trekking poles and all of my weight is being driven into the trekking poles. This again helps keeping all the weight off my lower body and putting that pressure and impact on here that really creates the pains and the aches and the injuries. Now the other technique would be what I resemble to a break and stop method where I'm actually leading with both my trekking poles. So I'll lead with them, then I get down to where I meet my trekking poles, my feet, and I stop. I lead, I stop. I lead, I stop. Again, putting all of my pressure and my weight into the straps, which be, it's being driven into the trekking poles. All right, well, that covers the proper technique to using your straps and using your trekking poles. Now, one thing that I wanted to add in is when you are using the proper technique to holstering your, your trekking poles, so again, that's my left, here's my right, going through the bottom and over, in the event that you would fall, which is probably going to happen, you are less likely to trap your thumb underneath the strap, and when you fall, you can have more movement with your hand. Going the other way that we talked about, if you have your handles tight like most people will, and they're doing their death grip, well, if they fall down, there's nowhere for their hand to move and get out of the way. Their thumb is trapped, and there's a better chance that they could injure their thumb when they fall on top of the trekking pole, whether that's breaking it, dislocating it, whatever. But it is a possibility. All right, well, let's talk about my own personal technique that I used. Uh, I do want to put a little disclaimer out, though. This is an unconventional technique. 
It's not something that I'm saying I'm recommending, but it worked well for me. I was able to get to Katahdin in 100 days, which I felt that I had a competitive advantage using this technique because I felt like I had more leverage on my trekking poles and was able to ascend and descend faster than other hikers. In addition to that, I was able to do this without putting any extra impact or pressure on my lower body and staying injury free on the trail. Now, having said that, uh, the first thing that I wanna talk about is how I'm gripping the pole. So first off, I am going through the straps through the top, which yes, it is the way that I told you not to do. But this is, again, what worked well for me. So I went through the top. And what I would do is I would make sure that my straps were a little bit more loose and longer than what you would typically see with a tightened strap up against when you're doing that death grip, but you're not supposed to do either. So uh, what I do, I, I would usually have about this much slack. I put my arm through my trekking pole strap, and I would rest my weight on the very bottom of my palm, just like that. My bottom two fingers, I had locked up against this lip, which was just below my shock. So I would hold it just like this. And actually, I probably made this a little too loose. All right. This is how I actually gripped the poles. And when I would ascend, I would ascend them. Again, I, I wouldn't you have a lot of grip with my, my thumb and my two fingers, my pointer and my, my middle finger, but my other two fingers would be locked against just below the, the shock so that I wasn't able to lose any grip on my trekking pole. Now, the reason why this worked for me was, was actually a couple. Number one, I rarely had to adjust the length of my poles because when I was ascending, I would ascend uh, with the grip much lower than what most people would grip. So I didn't need to shorten my trekking poles because of that. So let me demonstrate how I ascended to start off with. All right, now when I ascended, when I descended and when I walked on flat terrain, I'm still using all the same techniques as I talked about before. I'm ascending, my trekking poles are going behind me, digging into the ground to propel me forward. When I descend, I'm using them in front of me. And when I'm on flat terrain, I'm using a lot of it for the stability and balance. Now, with my technique, when I'm ascending, I felt that I had better leverage on the trekking poles. And using this technique, I was able to ascend the mountains faster than the other techniques. So I'm gonna demonstrate this now. So as you see, I am really driving the trekking pole into the ground. Uh, my, my arm is lower, it's locked into my trekking pole, and I have better leverage on my pole. All right, descending. Now, again, I'm gripping this the same as I did before, and uh, except when I'm actually going downhill, I grip this with now my middle finger. So my bottom three fingers are gripped around, and my top two fingers are loose around the grip of my trekking pole. I do not use the break and stop method unless if it's really steep. This would not be a steep enough terrain that I would actually use that uh, break and stop method. So I'm gonna leave with my trekking poles out, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put all of my weight in the strap just like I talked about before. And this is how I kind of compare how I use my trekking poles going downhill. They feel like crutches on my arms. All right, so I'm gonna lean with my trekking pole. And what I'm doing is I am putting a little bit of my body weight and I lean it forward so it goes and drives into the trekking pole. Now, just like this, I kind of mountain goat my way down. Now, when I got to a part of the trail, and this is gonna happen a lot, where you have a drop. What I saw a lot of hikers do on the trail is they had their death grips and they weren't really leveraging your, their pull to help break their fall. They would just jump down. And with all that pack weight that you have on the upper body, after a while, you really start to have a lot of aches and pains in your lower body. So with my technique, every time that I got to parts like this, it was I would lead with both my poles, kind of like that break and stop method. And before I jump down, I would lean all of my weight into my straps. And then I would gently come down. Let me show you that one more time. 
lead with both poles, all my weight in the bottom of my straps, and then gently jump down. All right, now I'm not going to demonstrate on flat trains since I already did that before. My method's very similar. But what I would do is I would actually wouldn't grip my poles like I am doing when I'm ascending or descending. I actually grip my poles the proper way. But instead of actually going up and through, since my arms were already through and I was trying to be as efficient as possible with my time frame, is I would basically just turn my strap handle and then wrap it around my hand. Turn my strap handle and wrap it around my hand. All right, so when I hiked on flat terrain, then I would hike the same similar way that I talked about before. Now, one thing that I did notice when I was trying to do the proper way, the proper technique with the amount of weight that I drove into my trekking poles was I actually got a lot of pain from the pressure. Instead of the pressure being on my lower palm, like how I hiked right here, when I actually use the proper technique and put all of that weight in there, where my pole strap would sit, it would between the lower, the bottom part of my thumb and the upper part of my palm, I felt that I got a lot of extra pain and it was not as comfortable when I would hike with this proper technique when I would descend and put a lot of that weight into it. When I was on flat terrain, it didn't matter because I wasn't really using the trekking poles to distribute my weight like I was descending. Well, one thing that I do want to uh, also put out there as a disclaimer with my method that at least happened to me. Because I was putting so much drive into my trekking poles when I was descending, what would happen is the, the trekking poles would go deep into the terrain. And although I had these small baskets on them, what would normally happen is if it was really soft, they would go past the basket. And because I was going so fast descending sometimes, I wasn't able to pull my trekking pole out of the dirt. And after a while, my flex tips would start to bend and bend until they broke. I had to replace these about every 500 miles on the trail. So that was something that was a little bit of a nuisance. However, I have an idea that I'm going to try when I get on the AT here in a couple weeks. I'm actually going to replace the smaller baskets with the bigger baskets that you see on poles when you go cross country skiing. And my idea is because it has more surface area, it's less likely to be able to really go deep into the ground. So I'm hoping that really prevents the issue from me having to replace my flex tips so often. All right, guys, well, that wraps up my video on the proper techniques, the improper techniques, and my own special technique. I'm not going to recommend my technique to anyone. It's really your own decision. Hike your own hike. This technique worked for me. It got me to Kadadin in 100 days without any injuries to my lower body. And I'm not going to change something that isn't broke to begin with for me. But I hope it was helpful for you guys. Thanks, everyone. Stay tuned for my next sighting. And remember to always follow Bigfoot. One nice thing about straps is when that happens, I can just pick it right back up without bending over because I'm lazy. I almost kind of feel like I am a mountain goat. I do not do the, the gas and brake method. Or right, brake and stop. Brake and stop. Is that what I called it? Brake and stop. Gingerly use my trekking poles and mountain goat my way down my descent. Free and keeping all of my weight off my lower body, but I was able to, but I was able to go, but I was able to ascend. No. Are you going to miss the sale? What's that?